All right, welcome back everyone to the Math Puzzle Crash Course. We have another um, order of operations problem. Uh, this one has multiplication, addition, and subtraction in it. And um, the problem here is uh, 5 times 3 plus 4 minus 2 times 6. All right, this uh, particular problem was the opening uh, mathematics problem presented in a video um, explaining the order of operations. It was kind of a short video. Uh, it was by uh, Professor Dave. Uh, Professor Dave explains uh, his, his, his YouTube channel. Um, I linked this great video in the description notes, uh, so uh, go check out the channel. It was a, a fairly short video, but um, um, I thought it was pretty well done for you know the time uh, frame of the video. Um, and again, I'll, I'll link that in the description. Um, but what I really liked about the video <clears throat> when he worked this problem is that he started out by just solving the problem from left to right, uh, ignoring the order of operations. And then he tried to work the problem from right to left to compare the answers. And when he did that, we saw that the answers were different. So what we had here was he just worked straight left to right, um, ignoring the normal order of operations convention, just doing 5 times 3 equals 15. Then he added 15 plus 4 equals 19. So yeah, that, um, let me put a little pointer in here. So yeah, 15 plus 4 equals 19. Now notice, normally if you're following order of operations, uh, if you're familiar with that, you would always start here with multiplication. Uh, so you would actually, you wouldn't be adding the 4, but you would be multiplying the 2 times 6. But let's just continue uh, with, his, uh, with his train of thought here in doing this. So 15 plus 4 is 19. And then we come down to 19 minus 2, because your next number is this 2. So 19 minus 2 equals 17. And then finally, 17 times the last number, which was 6. And then you get 102. And that's just going left to right, not paying attention to doing the multiplication first. Now, he, worked, he tried to work the problem from right to left. So he started with 6 times negative 2. You have the 6 times negative 2 up here. You get negative 12. Uh, then 6, yeah, 6 times negative 2 is 12. Then you have negative 12 plus this 4. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. Then you have your negative 8, uh, and then he added it to 3 to get negative 5. Remember, we're going from right to left this time. Uh, so then finally, he takes the negative 5, multiplies it by this 5 here, so your negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. So it kind of seems odd, <clears throat> and Professor Dave mentions this, it seems really odd to get two different answers working from left to right and then right to left. Um, you could get a lot of different answers, you know, depending on which operations you solved first, um, or you go, whether you're going left to right that way. But it seems like we should get the same answer uh, regardless of how we arrange the numbers. So it, this kind of means that if we're keeping the same operations um, with the same numbers, we should get the same answer regardless uh, of how we list them. So this is really the reason why, one of the big reasons why we have this order of operations convention. Um, for example, let's pretend, you know, we have this equation, so let's pretend we've purchased items at the store, and the cashier scans the items um, as uh, as they reach the scanner, and um, we'll write out the equation from left to right in the order that the items were scanned. So let's just imagine that we bought five loaves of bread at three dollars per loaf. Uh, then we buy four candy bars that cost a dollar each. So I don't have 4 times 1, but it's the same thing as saying plus 4. 
uh, no difference there. And then let's just say we returned, because we have a minus sign here, so let's say we returned two pounds of meat that was rotted, <laughs> and um, that meat cost $6 per pound, so we're going to subtract two times six. Uh, so that that whole uh, list of items here is explained in this equation up above. <clears throat> but let's say, what if the items are scanned in a different order by the cashier? Do you think that should change the cost at all? You know, if the quantities are the same and the price is the same? Yeah, obviously it shouldn't change the amount that you're going to pay at all. So let's just say, hey, we buy four candy bars that cost a dollar each. So here's our four. We buy five loaves of bread at $3 per loaf. Oh, here's our five times three. And we return the two pounds of meat that was rotted and cost $2 or $6 per pound. Well, here's our minus two times six. So that's all explained in this equation above. So the order of operations convention takes care of this issue. Um, so when you look at these two different equations, we should get the same answer. Um, so I'm not going to cover the order of operations um, in detail in this video. I do have a separate video that I'll put a link to in the description. Um, but basically, we look at this and we say, well, there's no parentheses, so let's go to the next step. There's no exponents. So again, we go to the next step. Uh, we do have multiplication. We don't have any division, but we solve our multiplication uh, going left to right. And then finally, we solve any addition and subtraction that we have uh, going left to right. So if we put these equations side by side and we follow the order of operations, we're going to come over here on, on this equation. We're going to multiply 5 times 3, which gives us 15. Uh, we still have our plus 4, which we just bring down here. Uh, minus 2 times 6 is negative 12. And so if you have 15 plus 4 is 19, right? Minus 12 equals 7. Now in the other equation, remember we didn't have parentheses. We had no exponents. We're going to have, we do have multiplication. So here we're going to start with 5 times 3 again. That's our 15 down here. We have the 4. This uh, 4 still comes down. Uh, then the next thing we do, we have minus 2 times 6 again. That's minus 12. So here we have 4 plus 15 minus 12 equals 7. So regardless um, of the order that the cashier scans these items, the final cost is always going to be $7. And that's what you would expect. But uh, for people who blindly solve left to right, you take these two equations and do that, you're going to get different answers. So when I hear people say, well, we were taught left to right back in my day, um, that's absolutely ridiculous. Because when you look at these two equations, you should be getting the same number, and you don't. So it makes no difference the order that you write these out. <clears throat> so um, and the other thing, too, is if you understand that your multiplication is simply repeated addition, uh, you can replace the multiplication with addition and still get the same answer. Um, this is where the order of operations begins to really make sense. Uh, and I want to say, too, it's not an arbitrary convention at all. So, for example, you have your 5 times 3. Well, 5 times 3 is the same thing as adding 5 3s. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 equals 15. So you can write that either way. It's kind of like a short, think of multiplication like a shorthand. It's a um, an easier way to write those five threes out. Also, five times three or three times five, doesn't matter. It could be represented as five plus five plus five equals 15. Uh, and the same way with your two times six. Two times six is the same thing as adding 6 plus 6. You're adding two sixes together, and that's equal to 12. Uh, 6 times 2, or 2 times 6, you can also represent that as 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Like you're basically adding six twos together, which also equals 12. So, yeah, so sometimes, you know, I'll hear things too, like, well, back in my day, 
order of operations applied only when you had parentheses. Uh, well, that's an incorrect statement. I hear that a lot. Like if I hear people say, well, if you don't have any parentheses, you just solve left to right. Uh, and that's that's totally incorrect. I, I don't know where that myth got started, but uh, you know the parentheses might add clarity, but there's no difference between these two equations here. Five times three plus four minus two times six equals seven. Or I could put parentheses around the five times three, and I could put parentheses around the two times six. But but what people need to understand is multiplication already has precedence over addition. It doesn't need parentheses to get um, you know precedence over addition, to get the priority. Um, the reason you have parentheses is to give priority to things like addition or subtraction over multiplication. Uh, it's to raise those lower uh, priority items up to a higher level. So the, it, these, these basically are redundant parentheses in this second equation. They don't change the answer at all. Uh, so that's one thing that, that needs to be really clear with people. I see this uh, as, as a really common mistake. Uh, and then I've also heard this excuse too, which I don't know where it got started, but I'll, I hear people say, but the order of operations only applies in algebra. And that's also incorrect. Uh, the order of operations applies in all mathematics problems where you have multiple operations present. So whenever you've got addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, uh, exponents, parentheses, any combination of all those, uh, you do have to consider the order of operations. Um, and honestly, this problem is actually an algebraic equation. That's something that maybe some people aren't, aren't recognizing either, but, but it is. Um, the prerequisite for that, for having an algebraic equation, is that we have an unknown, and we do. Uh, you know, we have an equal sign, and we have this question mark. Uh, you could simply replace that question mark with a variable, x, y, a, b, c, d, whatever, uh, and it's still an algebraic equation. So we're going to do that. I'm going to, we'll write it out as 5 times 3 plus 4 minus 2 times 6 equals a. We're going to use the variable a. I could have used anything. So we can play around with this algebraic equation just as we would with any other. Um, if the multiplication, addition, and subtraction is a little bit confusing, um, you can rearrange it following the rules you would working any equation, you know, as if you're solving for A or trying to simplify things. Um, and I'm just going to start <clears throat> in any order. You wouldn't have to do it exactly the way that I'm doing it. You could do it a different way. <clears throat> you could isolate the A on the left side, the right side, doesn't matter. But just as an example, just for something to work through, um, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. Remember, uh, when you're working with an equation like this, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. So if I subtract 4 from this side, this 4 is going to go away. Uh, and then on the right side of the equal sign, it's going to be a minus 4, which leaves me with 5 times 3 minus 2 times 6 equals a minus 4. Now there's a reason why I'm doing this. I'm just I'm trying to get operations kind of isolated on one side or the other, uh, maybe to ring a bell with some people. Um, I'm not saying that this is something that you've got to do. This is just a uh, call it an academic example if you want to. Uh, so I've got five times three minus two times six equals a minus four. Well, let's see what happens if I um, I don't know. Let's subtract the the or let's add the 2 times 6 on both sides of the equation. So this one goes away. Uh, if you have minus 2 times 6 and I add 2 times 6, well, that cancels this out, right? And then on the right side, a minus 4 plus 2 times 6. So now we're left with 5 times 3 equals a minus 4 plus 2 times 6. And I really have a point to this. Believe me, I do. I know a lot of people might be scratching their head, like, why are you doing this? Well, here's here's one one thing. So the five times three. Let's let's just do five times three. We got that all the, on the left side, all by itself. Here we have a multiplication. Let's go ahead and multiply. So five times three is fifteen. Well, now we've got fifteen equals a minus four plus two times six. 
All right, just stick with me here. Um, now we could add four to both sides of this equation. So on the left side, it would be 15 plus four equals a. Now, if we're gonna add four to a minus four, well, that's just zero, right? That cancels this out, plus two times six. So now we're down to 15 plus four equals a plus two times six. Well, we can add the 15 plus four to make it look a little simpler. So 19 equals a plus two times six. <clears throat> well, let's see. We've got 19 equals a plus two times six. Well, I guess on the right side of this equation, we could go ahead and multiply two times six, right? Two times six is 12. So that gives us 19 equals a plus 12. Well, we've got 19, if we subtract 12 from both sides of that equation, uh, we're going to be left with just a on the right, uh, 19 minus 12 over on the left, and guess what? That's 7. 7 equals a, or a equals 7, either way you want to look at that. So yeah, that's um, that's really uh, that's really all I had. I just wanted to uh, to go through and show that to everyone uh, how you go through and solve that uh, using the order of operations. So um, I hope that was helpful, and I will see you all in the next video.